Behind these masks lurks a woman who once held terrifying power over the nation's youth. <laughs> 30 years ago, this woman had kids all over the country singing songs about wheels on buses. One, two. She was head girl of the most liberal school in Britain, Play School, which opened its doors to pupils in 1964. Watch the day. Tony Arthur was like an older sister in tie-dye and tank tops, a lot older than kids knew, actually. Draw a circle in the air, in the air. The awful thing was that when I started play school, I was a long-haired hippie, and everybody thought that I was about sort of early 20s. I was actually mid-30s with two sons. We were told to imagine that behind that camera lens that you were looking at was one child alone sitting in a room. You could be an aeroplane with me. You need wings. And you were the only contact that child had, so you had to pass your real thoughts and your love through to that child. And I think we all be we really believe what we did. Uh oh. Week in, week out, play school's stable of presenters, all looking like members of Deep Purple, took it in turns to encourage kids to chuck paint around and stare aimlessly out of the window. Have a look through the round window. And when school was out, there was more fun to be had over on the racy sister show, Play Away. Play School didn't have the knock-knock jokes, whereas Play Away did. Play School didn't have the grown-up songs Play Away did. You actually felt a little bit more like, um, you know, you belonged to the entertainment industry than Play School. Some of Britain's top thespians first sprang into the spotlight on Play Away, but the exposure didn't go to their heads. Because of the nature of the programmes, people didn't think of you as a star. They thought of you as your friend. There was tremendous anonymity because the children didn't come and recognise you, so I didn't know I was famous. Major who? Major opened the door, didn't I? Play ah. away! After 11 years presenting kids' TV, Tony finally turned her back on the dressing-up box for grown-up telly. And a brief spell on TV AM. Be quiet. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Today, Tony's opted for a less hectic life away from the cameras in the Norfolk countryside, but she still likes to perform in front of an audience. To be or not to be, that is fine, but to say to be or not to Tony be... Tony now teaches people the secret of how to do successful presentations. Slightly wider apart than normal, and your hands down by your side. I've got various methods that I use, which are really only tricks. If you're three, happy and you two, know it, clap your hands. One, two, three, one, three. One, two. I get them to use those methods and you see somebody who is tiny in charisma. Blossom and blossom and blossom. Three. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, I did it. I did it too. Okay, have a go. My job is to make people say, yeah, I can do it. And they go out doing things that they didn't think they could do. Because I was like that. I didn't know what I could do until I did it. Any other famous Tonys? Well, there's Tony Mio, the snooker ace of the 80s. After his career went to pot, he settled down in a semi and semi-retired. These days, he's a house husband looking after five kids. And there's Tony Orlando, who, along with Dawn, was always tying yellow ribbons to trees. These days, the odds are you'll catch him in residence at a casino in the USA. In the 60s, Sue Lloyd epitomised glamour. She was a Vogue cover girl and steamed up Michael Caine's glasses in the Ipcrest file. I'm the luckiest woman in the world. You know, I had a body that sort of worked. And I fell into modelling and fell into film contracts and fell into everything. But Sue didn't become a real household name until she fell from glamour into the Midlands' most wobbly motel. 
She may have been just the housekeeper, but there was nary a penny nor Mr Pledge in sight.